opened somehow the world's first permanent exhibition in 1997 and um, has done since then um, over 30 exhibition projects by our own or as uh, corporations. Um, we have started collecting uh, since then. Meanwhile, we have um, over 16,000 um, games in our collection. We have also a big hardware collection of um, almost every video game system and home console, uh, computer system which uh, was sold in, in uh, Europe. We also have a few coin ops, a few arcade machines, and uh, we have magazines, uh, over 10,000 magazines. Uh, we have a video collection all around computer culture. If I say we, um, I mean um, the organization um, who is owning the Computer Game Museum. It's a private, non-profit organization um, based in Berlin. And another project which um, this organization um, founded was um, the German age rating system um, for computer games. And this has started in cooperation with, with, with the, the German Games Industry Association in '94. And somehow the idea to found a computer game museum um, was born from the feeling that um, computer games are much more than only toys for, for children. Computer games are so old as computers. And um, I have found, or there are some examples existing, uh, which prove that the scientists who invent computers um, in, in, in the late, uh, um, uh, late 40s, like Claude Shannon, for example, which is one of the pioneers from uh, 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 North America, um, that uh, he was very interested in, in computer games and he researched um, 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 how a computer program can be programmed which is able to play chess because um, he thought that if a computer is able to play chess, a computer can much, much more than only calculate numbers. And that was his vision. And um, the chess game was um, um, a vehicle for him to, to, to reach that. And then we have over the, the 50s and 60s where a computer were invented already and were used in usually uh, university and research laboratories, uh, we have um, a lot of mainly young scientists and students who had access to computers at this time uh, uh, who just had fun programming games and, and, and most of their colleagues um, 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 played it because it's just fun to, to play games. And so we have an academic uh, a time uh, where computer games are programmed and used. And uh, it, 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 it started to become commercial in, 17, uh, in 72. This is uh, uh, very much um, um, related to this um, game. You might also know it's, it's uh, a bat here, a bat there, and a ball between. It's called Pong or uh, other names, but um, this became the first home video game and this also became um, the first um, coin-op, different uh, companies, but same game. And um, so um, because uh, it was successful from the start and also because um, hardware at this time in the early uh, 60s became cheap enough for a consumer product. In our understanding, games are a new medium. And the thing which is new compared to, to other mediums uh, is that you can interact with. And uh, um, our aim with our exhibitions, also with articles or other talks we, we, we are organizing or, or doing is to, to somehow explain people who are not that familiar with games what they are. So we are translators somehow. And so it's important for us in our exhibitions to offer um, 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 our visitors the um, opportunity to, to interact with because it's so different if you're just looking at some, someone playing over the shoulder or, or watching, uh, um, a t a, 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 um, let's say, a television broadcast about games but being in that passive um, um, reception um, position, um, the gamer 
uh, has a very different experience of the very same thing on the screen because he's connected with it. And um, this is very important to experience. And the only and easiest way to understand this is just play by your own. We understand games as the first popular um, artifacts which enables non-experts to navigate into virtual digital environments, to interact in virtual environments, and also to communicate in virtual environments. They, uh, it was not easy to understand this in the 70s and early 80s, but now we understand it. So they somehow passed the road for our whole society, because they are so old. They are the oldest popular digital-born artifacts. And, and, and so um, it is important for our society to understand where it comes from. What we, what we see now with the internet, the social networks, mobile uh, uh, access, all this stuff. So we understand how important it is. And a big important source where this comes from are these early games. And so that's one reason why it's important to preserve them. For example, World of Warcraft is, 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 such, a, is, is such a game which opened our eyes. Because it's, um, um, when it, when it um, was released in, I think, 2005, something like that, maybe 2006, um, um, online games were something for somehow a special community. But World of Warcraft um, was the first game who attracted um, players from all over the world, which has not used to play online games or even games by, by themselves. And um, so um, it started um, our awareness that it somehow is a second part of our life. It, ca it could become a second part of our life because uh, um, um, an online game is very much consisting um, out of the social interactions um, of, the, uh, of the gamers. You have responsibility in an online game. You are part of a group of others, and you, you only can solve some tasks. You only can, can win battles if you are doing it together. Of course, also causes problems, because if, if your daughter is, is crying, and you're in the middle of such a battle, so yet you have a conflict mm -hmm. here. And, and of course, another problem is that you um, might get the feeling that you're losing contact with your real physical context. Right now, the games are going into these uh, social network things. That's the most recent hype. And uh, um, what will happen is that these social network things are expanded to real space. Then I just know, oh, a friend of mine, which I know from my social network, is just in the bar in the neighbor house, which can, can go over. That's logical to, to develop it. And so games also will be part of this mixed reality spaces. Entertainment is a very driving factor, um, also economical. Discussion about addiction comes from games, but it's much, much more about. And what, what, it, what it shows us is, and this is a challenge for our whole society, and I'm not only talking about the German society, is that we have to find a balance between our physical reality, which is still there. I still have a body, and I really depend on it. And this new kind of virtual realities. And this is the context we are treating games.